Divine Truths Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this personal experience from spirits is Sonia and Amantu discuss resistance to engage in personal desire, during which Mary channels Sonia, a celestial spirit from England, trying to remember her experience in the third sphere of the spirit world when she had resistance to personal desires, who needs to ask Amantu, a celestial spirit from Africa, who assisted her to feel the emotions at the time to relate the experience. The session was recorded on the 8th of August 2017 from 1.40 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi, welcome again. Amira and I have just had a short break. And um, this time we're, we're returning to discuss more about what Sonia raised with the previous channeling, and that was this whole concept of having a longing or a burning desire for truth. And, and you know, obviously one of the things that she suggested is that we could have a number of other spirits come and talk about their raw emotions that they have. So that's what we're going to be focusing our attention on now. But before we do, we were just having a short discussion in the break about how um, on the planet at this stage, most people in the whole world have had a moment in their life where they've had that raw emotional experience where they've just broken down and had a good cry or broken down through a realization that they've had. And almost everybody at some point in their life goes through those kind of experiences. The problem is we never allow them to continue into other areas. They're sort of anomalies rather than becoming a way of life. Yes. Yeah. So while it may be true that at any one point in time, 98%, one, two percent of the population is having these experiences, unfortunately, the majority of people do not carry forward these experiences into their day to day life. They don't understand the importance of these experiences in terms of their growth on God's path. Mm. And so therefore they don't carry forward these experiences. And these experiences are usually only triggered by things like trauma or some kind of thing that is so overwhelming in their life that they now can't avoid the experience. Yeah. And, and, and that's uh, so while there might be at any point in time uh, a couple of percent of the population experiencing these kind of experiences, unfortunately it's without any knowledge and without any continuance and without yeah. any long-term benefit because there's no, there's often then an engagement to avoid those experiences mm. in the future. Yes, and I know that for me, um, coming to embrace God's way in the desirous state is very different to some of my early experiences after we first met where those kinds of experiences would happen and I would feel relief afterwards but there still wasn't my will was not that i want to experience myself emotionally and so like that all the time like that all the time so a lot of i've done a lot of work over the years in between that time it, well i've resisted a lot of work a lot of times but partly i've had to come to see how much my will was opposing that mm. as and a, why was it opposing? and why it was and mm. to work through anger based issues about that yes. in order for me to now t to feel that i'm starting to grow a sincere desire to actually live that way yes and yes. and to have and i have a growing faith in the way again yes yeah. and it's interesting too i feel that once you hit that point your outlook on emotion is very, very different. I still see most people seeing emotion like, oh, it's very traumatic. I've got to try and prevent it. Oh, it's terrible. Can I talk about it a lot beforehand and all these kind of things that are going yes. on? Yeah. But you're all fear-based responses to emotion. Yeah. Once you've worked your way through all of that, every emotion you feel is just a natural flow of events that have triggered a certain emotion and you just feel it and, and you like a snow, like... You end up like most people having a cry for one or two minutes in a day means they've had a very traumatic experience mm. for most people on mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. Like I cry like 10, 15 minutes uh, at a time, you know, five to 10 times a day uh, on the average, you know, and I don't see it as a traumatic experience <laughs> at all. It's just a release of specific emotions. Yeah. And then some really big emotions I might cry for 
two or three hours of the day for five or six weeks at a time. Yeah. And I still don't see any major problem with that. No. Um, and so what I notice is that the majority of people have this attitude to emotion, yeah. which is like it must be prevented at all costs yes. <laughs> type of an attitude. Yeah. And the cost is terrible, actually. The cost of preventing emotion far exceeds anything like well it, it is the cause of all wars it is the cause yeah. of all trauma on the planet and it is the cause of all pain and suffering and the cause of all unhappiness in fact uh, is is this desire to prevent emotion and and it causes future events that then are very very destructive on the planet as well yeah i, I was just <laughs> crying about this this morning where i was feeling so disillusioned about I, like if I look around the earth as it is now, I get really upset sometimes about the way things happen for other people, especially in, you know, people are treated ter terribly. <laughs> and organisations um, are, are treating people terribly and there's no concept that the organisation itself is made of people and they could all change and not treat people terribly. Yes. And then there's this sort of like this never-ending sequence of events that it keeps occurring where people get treated more and more and more terribly for the sake of the dollar or some other, you know, shareholdings or yeah. monetary profit or whatever is the underlying reasons oftentimes, security, safety, fear-based reasons. And yet people just don't realise the benefits of just having a good flush out. <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> what I was feeling, you know, because we talked about a little bit this morning about how before I met you, I felt dissatisfied about a lot of things that were happening in the world, mm. governments, uh, if, big corporations, big corporations, and you I was lived involved. In the Middle East. Yes. So you've seen the effects of these big corporations on people. Yes, I'd worked with refugees in Scotland as well, and so I just I had a lot of feelings about. Um, how people in the so-called developed nations live as opposed to people in in developing nations and as opposed to you know like different foreign anyway a whole big thing yeah. um and my feeling at the time was very um you know i was involved in boycotting in protesting um and but i was trying to have a lifestyle where i felt i wasn't supporting those things mm -hmm. and so sometimes i still have those emotions come up of like, man, I just live in the West and I'm part of the problem, you know, because <laughs> right before I met you, I was like, I just can't live in the West anymore. I have to not because I just can't handle how much everything is just driven, consumerism, all this stuff is just driven towards uh, money which causes a lot of problems and well if we're honest it's driven towards selfishness selfishness yeah, yes yeah. and and i and i felt that really strongly and sometimes i suppose what i'm getting to is this morning in my cry i felt like well look i can still find selfishness inside of myself and every part of my when i examine my desires that i feel are harmful to others it's all about avoiding pain that's already within me. Exactly. And it just reinforced to me again, just I want to feel my pain so I don't, I cannot be a part, I don't want to be a part of this harm that's happening everywhere. Yes. And so I'm, I want to feel my pain, yes. you know. Yes. Uh, even though I'm scared or it's hard, I just, I, I want to do it because I can't handle the feeling of knowing seeing written everywhere but in the end you're going to have to handle that feeling too <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> and it's a really hard one for me <laughs> and that's that's the thing about the path is that you you in the end understand and also have complete confidence in the way god designed you to handle any feeling yeah and and this is what i notice is the majority of people on the planet while they may be triggered at moment by moment into specific feelings due to different things that have occurred in their life, they still don't have an internal feeling or an internal emotion that they can handle any feeling. Yeah. And, and, and because they don't believe they can, can handle any feeling, they then act like there's a whole heap of feelings I've got to prevent. And, and <laughs> that just create that, that right there is the root cause of all suffering. 
Exactly. Personal and global. Exactly. That desire, that feeling, I can't handle it and therefore I can't do it and I won't and yes. I don't want to. Yes. And so I suppose my point was I'm going to have to, oh, well, the, the truth is I'm going to have to handle the feeling that I have been a part of human suffering. Everyone is going to have to handle that feeling because the, the reality is that. everyone on the planet has in the past have has been contributed part, to it has contributed to human suffering and so i and i am today to still to contributing it. to it because I, there's still emotions i'm resisting yeah we, and and this is the thing we also need to understand is that the more emotions we resist in ourselves the more we contribute to human suffering generally yes yes but there's a sort of a burning desire in me not to contribute more <laughs> yes. and so that's that leads me to, to be further sort of motivated, I suppose. Yes, yeah. yes. And I feel that's an important thing that we needed to distinguish too because uh, so, someone from our discussions with Sonia might have assumed that that meant that 2% of people on the planet are actually on the path. But that's not actually... When we say on the path, it's a misnomer in itself. Yes, as she said. People go through experiences which are... On that, that are experiences that are related to God's way. Yeah. And then they go through a lot of experiences that have nothing to do with God's way. Mm. And many times that can be the same person having that, <laughs> those two experiences. And, and for many of us, we, uh, while we are at times doing things God's way, often it's only because of the build up of pressure, the pressure cooker of life, if you like that builds up, that causes us to do things God's way momentarily. And that's not the same as having a soul-based desire to do it God's way. As a conscious decision, I want to do it. Correct. Yeah. And, and we need to make that distinction. And perhaps that the thing that started our conversation was the fact that um, I wasn't as clear with what Sonia wanted to say as I was happy with. Um, because of some emotions that I'm resisting, mm. which is about being very direct and feeling um, frightened of Sonia and me <laughs> being viewed as sort of hard asses. <laughs> if I could, she viewed. wouldn't use that word, but I will. <laughs> being viewed as confrontational. Co and, uh, and mean. And mean, yeah. You know, and yeah. that's, I know she d isn't mean, but sometimes in my addiction to... Uh, well, the celestial spirit is always truthful. And very direct. And direct and yeah. specific. Yeah. And whenever a person is channeling a celestial spirit yeah. is not those things, then you know straight away that that's their own... Their own inflection has now appeared inside yeah, of the material. Yeah, and what I felt during the channeling was I would get a very strong rush of sort of... What she wanted to convey, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I would start to do that, and it would suddenly be lost to me. Mm -hmm. Or uh, and so then it was really, I have to get involved then of my memory of trying to sort of remember what I was inspired with and express that, yes. which is very different to how it feels like in the when initial part of the channel where I just feel I'm directly expressing as yes. it's happening. But now we're discussing channeling. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, and and we probably, yeah. we're going to have some discussions in the future about channeling, aren't we? We've decided yes. we will. Because like there, there is a lot of people still highly drawn to mediumship for the wrong reasons, obviously. And, and, and it doesn't help them in their own progression either in many cases because they don't understand the full dynamics of what's mm. involved. And so we need to discuss all of that. Yes, and but I and I do think um, there's a responsibility of mediums to be conscious of how their emotional condition is affecting. Certainly, and to really I try to hone that skill a lot of feeling what just went on there, and that's I just wanted to raise yeah. it as a point because obviously. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's true. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. No, but, it, yeah. but it's true. We need to we need to acknowledge that. A celestial spirit is going to be specific, direct, honest, straightforward, and frequently confrontational as a result of that. Not not by purpose, not not as a manufactured state, but just because they're stating truth. Well, that's, that we, that's how they feel. Yeah, they're yeah. stating truths that, that the majority of people on earth will not agree to. And they don't but they don't have any judgment of the truth or of the person or of anything, but mm. 
myself as a medium, I have a fear of being perceived as judgmental. Yeah. And so sometimes that gets in the way of me just like yeah. spewing yeah. what she says. Yeah. <laughs> spewing what she says. I doubt whether I could consider it a spew. But <laughs> it, it's, uh, oh, you know, the fre frequently any channeling we get has, is pregnant with truth, if I could yeah. make, make that statement about it. But it also has to be done with consideration, as as you properly say. Yeah. But getting back to the subject at hand, mm. which is this subject regarding truth and how we respond to it, and and what it feels like to have a raw response to it in comparison to this whole intellectual uh, mind games we have a tendency to play with ourselves when we hear truths. And what we'd like to do is is start have a have a few discussions with a few different spirits who I know are all lined up, <laughs> and it's just a matter of whether we'll get the chance to talk about it. But uh, but what we'd like to do is have each one of them just mention a few experiences that they've already had or all they're going through at the moment, that that where they feel quite strongly about. No, I haven't wanted to do this, and I, this is how it feels not wanting it, and this is what I've had to do, and. And also maybe give some context in terms of how long they've been uh, emotional about that, mm. like in terms of days or weeks or hours or months or whatever, mm -hmm. um, so that people on Earth can get a bit of a, a context of what that's going to look like on Earth. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, because there's this Obviously, concept. yes. And, and obviously and, in the spirit world, <laughs> these things some can, can happen quicker. They can, but frequently they don't. That, that frequently they happen just as long as they would take on Earth. Yeah. Um, they can happen quicker under certain circumstances, obviously, but, but we need to get some context to that so yeah. that people can see that, no, it's not going to be a walk in the park come in the spirit world to yeah. deal with these particular emotions, just like it wasn't a walk in the park. Yeah, on Earth well, I think their experiences will, will um, <laughs> speak for themselves, really, won't they? Exactly. Yeah. But, um, but uh, my experience is sometimes, though, when I really own and face my resistance, it does actually dissipate quite rapidly. Yeah. It just depends on yeah. there's other issues where I'm in, a, I'm in a standoff with God, I call it, <laughs> on certain issues where I know his way is the way, but gee whiz, I don't want to do it. But and I've been in that a, state for weeks. But even some, that is a and, more honest state yeah. than what the, many of the people who are listening to what we present are in. Mm. That most of the people who listen to what we present are not even in that state yet, where they're yeah. not even being honest, that they don't even want to hear it really. Yeah, and so, I've been in that state too, and it doesn't get you anywhere. It's only when you start to say, because there's some humility even in me now to know, look, I know I'm... I know, and logic, I know past experience, love, it's all showing me that I've got an emotional error that's causing me to not see this issue clearly. Yeah. But holy mackerel, do I not want to change on this issue. I'm so afraid, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that's, it, but that is, as that's in how our I get discussions, to it. we've also talked about using fear as an excuse, because that's, uh, that's also something I see most people doing too using their fear of going through an emotion as an excuse to not go through it. Yeah, but once you get to that point where, you, well, I feel, even this state that I'm in on these certain issues, mm. I know that my fear is not an excuse. I know it's just an emotion yeah, well, inside a, of me Yeah, there's a now. difference to using it as an excuse to not feel yeah. and then realising that actually it's just an emotion you have to feel. I'm going like to have to feel it. Every other emotion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to, I know. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. let, so let's have a chat with some of our spirit friends who are going through those particular things and see what they've got to say about their experiences. And I think we we were going to start with uh, with with Sonia. Sonia's experience, weren't we? Or one or two of Sonia's experiences that she could maybe highlight, which might show the case in point. Yeah. So I just need a little minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Sonia again. Yeah. This is a little uh, trickier for me than for the other people. <laughs> you can't remember, can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and maybe this is something I need to raise just for our audience's very point. Once you've processed an emotion, you can remember the event, but you can't feel the emotion anymore. <laughs> it's like the memory of the emotion is gone. <laughs> so I find it difficult to discuss these things um, in as much detail as I know uh, my brothers and sister here are going to be able to because... 
I'm having to cast my mind back to a time that feels very long ago. <laughs> and also, I'm trying to almost inhabit myself in a way that I was before so that I can accurately express what it was what that it felt like what it felt like to, to and what my false beliefs really were okay. because as you correctly state once they're gone they seem so false as to not warrant any attention anymore and and it's almost as if i think why why was i like that <laughs> exactly <laughs> and in, in the future we'll be having as you know we're planning some discussions about repentance and forgiveness and obviously um that's going to be quite an emotional discussion and and people will start to see the reason why you can't remember emotionally remember because that's how you actually go through things but but perhaps uh, one thing that might help is to have a, the person who helped you okay well, who would yes. actually remember your yes. experiences probably better than you would have at the time yeah yeah <laughs> and maybe they could relate some of these experiences that you actually went through okay So my friend, Amant, Amantu, Amantu. <laughs> yes, uh, who is a, fr a male, a friend of mine, yep. helped me at this time. Yep. So he's come to help me reflect again on these issues. So as I mentioned, I had grown up in this sort of... Um, a religious environment mm -hmm. and I didn't foster much can we be more specific in a Christian so it was an Anglican mm -hmm. faith yep and where did you live I lived that? in England yep. and um, yes so I I didn't foster much anger in my life on earth mm -hmm. I, I wasn't drawn to angry states very much, mm -hmm. uh, but I had inherited from my mother some ideas about service mm -hmm. and self-denial. Mm -hmm. And some of these were the hardest, uh, some of my injured viewpoints of these things were some of the hardest things for me to give up after I passed into the spirit world. I didn't give them up on earth and I never challenged them on earth. Um, and I was involved in actually uh, doing some good deeds for people when I was on earth, mm -hmm. um, which for which there were some rewards when I passed. Mm -hmm. But I had to come to face that not all of my motivations were 100% pure. Mm -hmm. so, so here we're talking specifically about motivations for self-sacrifice, um, doing things for others because it's the right thing to do. And, yeah, rather, and yes. these are areas that you believed were right as well, weren't they? These were like you <laughs> firmly believed that this was right. This is the yes. proper thing to do. And I firmly believed it was selfish <clears throat> for me to um, explore avenues of my personal creativity and my personal um, joy, joy, happiness, yeah. things that I enjoyed doing just for leisure, pleasure. Just for your own pleasure. For my own self. There always had to be some alternative other than for yourself, some alternate benefit. And I firmly believed that the way that I personally as a person received joy was through the service of others, yes. to others. Yes, yeah. which is one method way we can receive some joy, obviously, but not, yes. not all. <laughs> Not all. And I did receive some genuine joy. Yes. But I was very, very resistive to the idea when I was faced with my brother here and friend, when he was attempting to help me while I was still um, in the lower spheres, to engage in parts of my personality that were unique and that were about being creative and mm -hmm. having fun and being lighthearted and joyful and just experiencing my own sort of sensory emotional pleasure yeah. in doing things so a man too would then uh, he would know remember probably those events and how you first responded better than you do probably <laughs> yes, so okay <laughs> so perhaps if we just get him to explain yes like what was the response to being told for example that you know all the things you were doing weren't necessarily for the right reason <laughs> okay so i'll hand over to him sure 
Hello, my brother. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for this invitation. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I remember my sister Sonia well, yeah. and she was very cranky. <laughs> <laughs> when you say cranky. <laughs> she was very upset about the idea of, and she felt um, no motivation, almost like, as you would say on earth, like she didn't want to get out of bed. So she was passive aggressive angry. <laughs> passive aggressive um, of what's the point? I don't even care about that stuff. Why are you talking to me about it? And very much pushing me away yeah. whenever I tried to talk to her about being her unique self and um, looking after herself and her desires. And what drew you into the conversation initially with her about it? Well, I could see that this was something that was holding her back and mm -hmm. it was part of my assignment to help her progress. And so um, she would just be idle much of the day because uh, she had run out of people to look after. <laughs> her condition was such that she was not surrounded by people suffering. So, so this was like she was now in what sphere? In the third sphere. third sphere. So, yeah, there's not too many people suffering too badly in the third no. sphere. And <laughs> life is very pleasant. Of course. And, but she was very resistive to engaging with the pleasure of her surroundings, the beautiful waterfalls, the lovely nature, yeah. the the artwork that is a, actually a part of her soul, painting yeah. And, yeah. and creating uh, visual things yeah. uh, is a part of Sonia's unique uh, personality that she so enjoys. So was it true at the time? she was drawn back to the hills to a degree to help people down there or? yes yeah. um and but over time she became sort of listless about uh how to occupy herself yes she yeah. was always attempting to go back there but there was some feeling of uh it wasn't bringing her satisfaction mm -hmm. she felt at times annoyed that mm. people wouldn't take her help Mm -hmm. um, initially, and then she sort of worked through this understanding that unless they desired help, it was pointless giving help. Mm -hmm. But then she just felt at a loose end. Mm -hmm. And so some of the things that she had to work through was, as you said, the passive aggression, allowing that to become a painful anger. Mm -hmm. So she... So she instead of uh, storing up this ag passiveness by going... This, oh, I'm, I'm just not, not going engaging, much and I'm just not going to. I'm just going to relax and and whatever. I'm not taking part. I don't yeah. really care. Yeah, was some of the the way so, she that's used. How it started. So I would engage with her in discussions about this, and we would find ourselves in situations where there was things where she, that would spark her natural creativity and interest. Yeah. but she had some. Essentially, it was fear, fear mm. about engaging those things and feeling that she was being selfish or naughty by doing them. Mm -hmm. And so what the process Sonia had to go through was a sense of painful anger, of feeling like rather than just disengaging with what was challenging her, allowing me to challenge her and the activities to challenge her so that she could begin to feel her resistance mm. as a feeling of painful, no, I don't want to, which quickly dissolved into a sense of fear, which was exposing the false belief that she was being selfish by doing these things. And then when she went through the fear, what kind of body sort of responses were there in that process? Well, going through the fear was quite a, a contracting sort of a, a, a feeling of restriction and a kind of painful sort of a, a contraction yeah. but then a most beautiful uh physical change came upon Sonia where it was like her entire being relaxed and became softer yeah now w w was there a lot of tears in that process or yes yes As especially in the the initial painful anger yeah. was quite a tearful and sort of um, a tearful process as Sonia first had to face the fear of acknowledging that she was in fact angry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because she judged that very strongly. And she felt God would. She sure. felt that was making her bad mm -hmm. and so she had some cries about even just uh, that was a part of releasing the resistance to the knowledge 
the the kind of emotional knowledge that yes, she was angry, mm-hmm. um, and then she let some of the anger of it was very childlike. This anger she had to yes. go through of like no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, no, yeah. I'm not going to, and that eventually, well, it that exposed the fear that she had, mm-hmm. which was oh, I'm not, I'm never going to be loved and accepted while I have this anger, uh, this fear, mm-hmm. or this, sorry, desire. This desire, yeah. Yes. And... Um, In other words, she wasn't allowed to have a pure desire to enjoy something. It, She's not she was, going to be loved and accepted if she She that was afraid desire. that that was the truth. Yeah. And then as I continued to come around her, as she was willing to feel that fear, and she, she went through this very constrictive, almost like facing her worst possible nightmare nightmare that Mm -hmm. she was going to uh, go through this process of becoming honest with herself and realizing that she did actually enjoy this creative arts (laughs) (laughs) and while this sounds very trivial uh, it's not trivial at all it's not trivial whatsoever this was a very important part of her uh, growth yeah um this fear of like, oh, no, I'm going to enjoy something for myself, that was quite a constricting and quite a terrible sort of overwrought time for Sonia, which ter- would terrifying be... Terrifying for her is probably the best way of saying it. Terrifying, mm. which would be interspersed with uh, times of some relief because she had allowed some of that fear to sort of overwhelm her. And, and then, when that fear overwhelmed her, she was crying then, was she? She was crying, yeah. she was um, shaking and, yeah. and constricting. Yeah. And then eventually, <clears throat> the more we worked through that fear or she worked through the fear at, and I would help, to help her to sort of uh, remind her. Yeah. <laughs> of, that of, was still there. It was still there yeah. in front of her, this yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, Eventually, this dissolved into quite a relieving, sobbing grief yeah. for a period of time where she came to experience the grief that she had been taught from a very, very young age that mm. she was selfish if she enjoyed herself for mm. herself. Mm. And once that was gone, Sonia was able to express her real self uh, in a much more relaxed way, and yeah. she had a lot more pleasure and enjoyment in her life. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, now, can we get some kind of estimate in terms of her time? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's quite difficult because it's uh, there's a lot obviously going on, and there's not mm-hmm. by the time you reach the third sphere, there's not much sleeping going on. <laughs> so, yes, if we were to estimate it in a way that someone on Earth could relate to. This t- whole process took between two to three years. So how long was the process of just feeling like uh, sort of numbed out to it? Yes. So this was the, this was the longest, the longest period. Mm-hmm. So um, if we estimate maybe uh, oh, nearly 18 months probably right. is, yeah, so is half it correct. Half that time. Yes. Um, yep. And then the... The uh, awakening to the anger, if you like, the yeah. more the mm. more and the uh, more angry state, agitated. Dealing with state. the fear of of acknowledging the anger and acknowledging the anger and experiencing the resistance emotionally. Mm-hmm. This was a was sort of like a three to four month process. Yes. Uh, the fear process was the almost the rest of the time. Yeah. Uh, because. Sonia had resistance. She would come in and out and yeah, in and out yeah. of so that. So touching it, walking away, touching it, walking yes. away. Yes. And once she then decided fully to surrender to the fear, this passed quite quickly and then there was a couple of months, equivalent to mm-hmm. Earth time, of really just uh, releasing the grief, Having coming to, to feel the truth yeah. of that what she'd been taught as a child was an error and had harmed her mm-hmm. and feeling God's truth enter her on the issue. Mm-hmm. So that was a very healing time really mm-hmm. of two to three months equivalent mm-hmm. um, and she was done. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's right to say, isn't it, that the resistive period is sometimes the most difficult period. And, that, and here we're just discussing one or two 
quite raw emotions, mm -hmm. even though they're quite intense emotions mm -hmm. on the planet. And they are quite intense emotions on the planet. There are a lot of religious people on the planet who are going to have to go through these emotions. Yes. And a lot of other people too. And a lot of people uh, who, what I noticed, I wasn't religious. I, yeah. ca I came from Africa. Yeah. But I was taught in a sort of a tribal setting, really, <clears throat> that yep. um, myself as an individual was not important. Yeah. And theref my duty was to kind to the, of the to group, the tribe, to, to the, the group. society, to mm -hmm. the... to my not just my parents but my elders mm -hmm. and i had to fulfill a sort of a role mm -hmm. and i did that quite exuberantly mm -hmm. on earth mm -hmm. and i did well at that mm -hmm. but when i passed i had to come to deal with a lot of um the false beliefs that i had about what made me a good person mm -hmm. similar to similar sonia to even so though we had quite a different background yes and this earthly. is a re one of the reasons why you would have been assigned to her in the yes. first place to help her yep. yes so yes. you've also been through a very similar experience obviously yes yeah all right so perhaps uh, thanks for, for saying about that so sonia if we have sonia back sonia remembers that now <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have to thank my friend. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that you didn't sort of regret. Did I, <laughs> I had completely forgotten. Yes. I had completely forgotten and almost this, um, uh, yeah, almost all of it, mm, yeah. <laughs> really, from, a, from an experiential uh, to describe it to you. Yeah. I, I understand that I had the injuries and I think during our previous conversation I sort of in mentioned them trying to remember yeah, them i could yeah. tell you clinically that i had problems with these areas yeah but that entire that is quite a beautiful process yeah exactly uh, that exactly. i went through and it was quite nice to be reminded in yeah. fact it and was, that's why it's great to have an precious, observer sometimes yes. <laughs> because because uh, you know quite often i wonder all the processes i've been through how many people have been observing them so some sometime later it can be <laughs> many many don't you worry i've but been the, i've been privileged to witness them but the um yeah it's an interesting process in itself isn't it that if we go back to the point that now you don't remember it uh, in, from an emotional experience. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, this should also be quite faith strengthening to people who are listening because it should show them that once you go through the experience, no matter how traumatic it feels at the time, and when, when you come out of it sincerely, it's like it almost never happened and, and you mm -hmm. can barely even recall. And what, certainly uh, the was. fear and the pain and the anger they you, i feel honestly i feel so full of god's truth and god's loving opinion on those matters now that it literally feels like there's no space in me for for mm. the the um false ideas that i labored under for such a for all of my earth life yeah. uh, to even exist yeah and, and in, in some ways that should give people a lot of confidence too that this emotional process that God's designed is actually the solution. You, you see people on earth spending many tens or decades of their life working through post-traumatic stress issues mm -hmm. when the reality is, is that most of the time we're not actually working through them and we're resisting them and mm. that's what causes a fair majority of our pain. But yes, and this two to three year period mm -hmm. while it was um in some ways in intense mm -hmm. now that i remember more about it in other ways um because it was sort of because my growth and progress was foremost in my mind and my intention uh, even though i had resistance and different things that i was working through i was able to progress uh, on that one issue in two to three years. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, uh, there was a, an improvement in my life. Major improvement. Uh, not only at the end of the three years, but yeah. in the process during, of going through it. it. Yeah. Uh, and so hmm. it's a good investment of time. Yeah, well, there's no other better investment of time, <laughs> really, is there? Um, that's what I find myself, but it's, it's no other. It's, especially when I consider the the level to which I expressed my nature and personality at the start of that period mm. and the amount mm. to which I did even at the end of that period and I was still really only in the third 
the higher realms of the third sphere at that mm. time. Mm. Yeah. So that's a great example of the experience. And it's also good that you couldn't remember a lot of it initially so that we could illustrate to our audience how, you know, once things pass, things pass and you, and you really no longer see them as important as you used to see them before at all. Mm. And in fact, you get to the point where it is true forgetfulness where you, you, you really, you know, you have to spend a sort of a lot of power to even go back there even to remember the <laughs> <Yes>. events <laughs> which yes. is which is which is a process really of forgiveness isn't it that god in, we engage through the process with god mm -hmm. it's wonderful yeah i'm looking forward to your discussion i know you have discussion planned about forgiveness yes soon, yeah. So. yeah so we can illustrate many of those benefits to you in that discussion the um, so so that's that's one sort of one primary area, of course, um, that that you had to address. Obviously, there would have been others, and most people have more than one. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there there yeah. were there were, but um, this was in fact quite a major yes. issue for me, a which is issue. why it was the first one that came to mind when you mentioned it in our previous discussion. Yes. But interestingly enough, you'd reached the third sphere by this stage mm -hmm. before you've started to deal with these particular emotions. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, um, obviously other things had been dealt with uh, before then quite a lot more easily. And this yes. also is an illustration of how some of the most difficult emotions we face are often faced uh, well into our progression, actually. Yes. And, and unless we've learnt this, natural way of dealing with things emotionally by that stage we 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 wouldn't get through those particular emotions mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you obviously had learned up until that point that progressing emotionally is the way to go and you yes. decided that and i was open to my guide even mm. though i had mm. resistance i had opened up to understanding that his guidance was there to help me yes. uh, and that uh, by listening yeah. i could i had enough faith already yes and you hadn't succumbed to, is it the word indolence? Uh, is that indolence. The word? the word where, you know, you become satisfied with getting to the second sphere and <laughs> yes. uh, you obviously have felt that you could continue to progress, which, yeah. is, which is also an uh, important part of progression. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, I suppose that um, while I was on earth, I did have some positive feelings about God and mm -hmm. some truth. I did understand some truth about God. I didn't understand that a lot of what I felt about God was an error mm -hmm. um, and only part of it was truth. I felt all of it was truth. Mm -hmm. And some of what I dealt with in the lower spheres was about the truth about God, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, but because I was willing to do that in the lower spheres, mm -hmm. because that had been something that was important to me on my, in my life on earth. Mm -hmm. So when I passed, I was open to hearing more about that from others. Mm -hmm. um, because I had that desire for God that was being purified through my growing knowledge of the truth about God emotionally through my progression, um, then that pulled me to, mm. to keep going further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is an important factor too, isn't it, in mm -hmm. that process? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's very good. Thank, thank you for helping us with that. And thank you for helping me. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it helps you to remember things that you've forgotten, but anyway, I, I, I'm sure it was going to help many of the people who are listening to it. Yes, and I do have a, a pure desire to to help others now. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but it helped me. Well, I should help my old friend as well. Yes, and, and it's interesting, isn't it, too, how um, a person who's in a better condition than ourselves helping us through an experience can office, uh, often relate the experience with more accuracy than we ourselves can relate it, which, it, which in itself is an interesting thing because mm -hmm. it tells us that often our concept of what is real and what is not real is often severely distorted as we're going through things. And that's, this is where I feel I place, you know, if the more trust you place in God and the process, the less you worry about how mixed up you are in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that yeah. is very true. Yeah. Yes. And I and I have been um, a helper and witness to other people's progress. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I I understand it's easier to to recall as well. Yeah. But you're very correct. Often 
the error feels so much like truth while we're while we're in this this and, and we're mixed up in a whole lot of false beliefs while we're going through it too aren't we mm -hmm. but so much so that if we don't trust the process and we get so mixed up in the false beliefs of of the actual emotion we could actually just you know decide to stop the whole process there and then so you've got to have some trust in the process Yes. Before you'll go through the process, obviously, is yes. what I'm probably getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay.